ऑडियंस and all my dear brothers and the sisters i welcome all of you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh meaning may the peace mercy and blessings of almighty god allah subhanahu wa taala be on all of you mashallah the subject of this afternoon's talk on one of the 99 names of allah subhanahu wa taala which is the 65th session alhamdulillah is allah al maula This word "maula" in Arabic language is derived from the root "waw," "lam," and "ya," and this root appears in the glorious Quran for about two hundred and thirty-two times, and it has about twelve derivations, and one of the derivation is "maula," and this word "maula." when it is prefixed with al then it becomes the name or attribute of allah subhanahu wa taala al maula this name of allah subhanahu wa taala appears in the quran for 11 times the meaning of this word the first and foremost meaning of al maula is the one who is nearest to you at the time of need and help and we all know allah testified in the glorious quran in surah qaf surah number 50 ayat number 16 that most certainly we are closest to you than your own jugular vein jugular vein is the lifeline for human beings and allah rabbul alamin says that he is closest to us than our own jugular vein but we shall remember this does not mean that allah subhanahu wa taala in person is close to us he is not within us to help us with his sources that he has created to help us with his divine wisdom as he pleases he is closest to us so the first meaning of maula is the one who is nearest to you at the time of need and help the second meaning is the permanent friend against all hostile enemies he is a permanent friend if allah becomes a friend for somebody his friendship is not temporary once he chooses somebody to be his friend then allah remains the friend of this person till the person dies allah doesn't leave you in the lurch allah doesn't leave you on the way his friendship continues with you forever so the permanent friend and not only that he is your friend he is a friend with a purpose there is a popular english saying a friend in need is friend indeed meaning to say if you are in need 
If there is a friend who helps you in the need, then that is your truest friend. And Allah says, I am that friend who will always be your friend permanently. And not only that I will be your friend permanently, but also that whenever there is any hostile situation, an adverse situation, where you are into some trouble, I will always be there to help you as a friend. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the third meaning is, the ultimate defender. He is the one who keeps you defending, even if you continue to be in the most dangerous situation, where you have lost hope in every other thing, there you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you and bring you out of that situation. This is al Mawla. Allah al Mawla. Now it is from this word that we have another popular word in Arabic which is Wali. And we very often use this word Wali, Wali Allah. When you say Wali Allah, it means the friend of Allah. And Wali Allah, we say to the people who are pious and righteous. These people are generally referred as Wali Allah. Now there is one who does good deeds and he says, I am the friend of Allah. And there is another situation where Allah says, I am somebody's friend. So definitely, the degree where Allah says, I am the friend of somebody is much more higher or the highest. If Allah is saying, I am your friend, I mean, this is an ultimate achievement. See, if I say, I am the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I claim myself to be the friend of Allah, or I call somebody, no, this person is the friend of Allah, this is my claim, this is our claim. But if Allah declares, I am somebody's friend, then that is an ultimate achievement. And now when you read the glorious Quran, Allah Rabbul Alameen, in various places, has described who are those people whom Allah chooses to make them, the, make them his friend. It is from us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses some of us to make his friends. Who are these people? This is one thing, inshallah, that I will try to discuss in my session. And other than that, in general, when you read the Quran, Allah Rabbul Alameen gives an option to this Muslim Ummah. Allah says, for you Muslims, always you will find me your friend. Now, how to benefit from the friendship of Allah? It is up to you. But it's a declaration from Allah to every Muslim. For every Muslim, Allah says, I am your Mawla. I am your best friend. I am your best defender. I am your best helper. I am the one who will always be there for you in your need. And if you read the glorious Quran, one of the beautiful explanations to understand Allah being the friend of the Muslims is in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 257. But before we read Ayat number 257, the context of this Ayat begins from Ayat number 255. Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 255 is the Ayat al-Kursi. The popular Ayat al-Kursi that you read is Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 255. Now, many a times when you read Ayat al-Kursi, you read it to say, I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to defend me against the shaitan and of course Allah defends you against the shaitan when you read ayat al-kursi the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said about the fazilat of the ayat al-kursi that when a person recites ayat al-kursi in the morning Allah defends him till the evening when he recites it in the evening Allah defends him till the morning and in another authentic narration of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Allah commanded you five times salah in a day after each salah after each salah, when you recite Ayat al-Kursi once, meaning when you perform Fajr, you read Ayat al-Kursi once. Then you perform Zuhar, you read Ayat al-Kursi after Zuhar once. After Asar, you read once. After Maghrib, you read once. After Isha, you read once. So the Prophet says, whoever keeps this practice in his life or in her life, the only thing between him or her and the Jannat is their death. That's the only thing between them and the Jannat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the moment you die, Inshallah will enter you into Jannat. Meaning to say that you will not be punished for your sins at all. Allah will forgive everything for you. And Jannat will be your abode, Inshallah. So this is the fazilat of Ayat al-Kursi. Now to understand Ayat al-Kursi, though that is not my subject, but still because it comes in a context, you need to first understand when Allah says, I am the Mawla of the Mu'mineen, 
He wants us Muslims to understand that I become your Mawla when you believe in me the way I have spoken about myself. I have declared myself in Ayat al-Kursi. Because there are many other fake gods worshipped on earth. People go to other gods to seek their protection. So the people made different gods and they call that this is the one who will defend us. This is our Mawla. So Allah defines about his glory, his majesty in Ayat al-Kursi and he says, Allahu la ilaha illahu wal hayyul khayyum. Allah, the one besides whom there is no God, the one who is self-subsistent and who has life which has not been given to him by anybody, he is not given birth, he is ever living. Meaning, you cannot define him with a time, saying he started to live from here. He is ever living, he is beyond your comprehension. There is no birthday for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, all other gods that the people worship, they celebrate their birthdays. They have Jesus Christ, Christmas, the birthday of Jesus Christ, and they call him the God. The God is born. So what is the difference between the creation and the creator? If the creator is getting birth, then the creator and the creation are equal now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hayyul Qayyum, the ever-living, the self-subsistent, all other fake gods, compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they worship Nauz Billah, may Allah forbid, these gods are dependent. All these idols that they worship. Allah la ilaha illahu wal hayyul qayyum. La ta khuzuhu sinatu wala naum. Every other god that you worship, they slumber and they sleep. Slumber and sleep is the quality of creation. You slumber, slumber means ung lagna. You stand, you slumber. When does this happen? When you become tired. Allah says Allah doesn't become tired. He neither slumbers nor does he sleep. All other fake gods, they slept. So they can't be God, Allah says. Allahu la ilaha illahu wa lahiyyul khayyum. La taakuzo husinatu wa la noom. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. Everything in this universe, it 100% totally belongs only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the owner of the universe. Nothing in the universe belongs to anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to whomever Allah wills from it, He gives whatever He wills to give. That is what Allah told us in Ali Imran Surah number 3, ayat number 26. Allahumma malik al-mulk. Oh Allah, you are the owner of entire universe. Tuti al-mulk amantasha. Of this universe, whatever you want to give to somebody, you give it. Wa tanzi al-mulk amimantasha. And from whomever you want to take away the power from this earth, you snatch it away. Hillary Clinton, at the time of election, many people do not know, she had already designed her dress that she wanted to wear for the presidential oath. What happened? She was so confident she is going to win. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided, no, you are not going to win. No, I am not going to give the power to you. What happened then? Look at the Indian elections. Nobody thought that Modi will win. But he won by two-third majority. This is how Allah decides. If he wants to win, Lahu mafis samawati wa mafilar. Everything in universe, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Manzal ladhi yashfa'u in dahu illa bezni. Who has the guts? Who can dare intercede with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without his permission? Even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he has to make shifa in khayamat, the shafaat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in khayamat is with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By himself, our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will never do that because Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best to know the honor and respect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has taught us how to respect and fear Allah. Then how can he himself behave in a way which degrades the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he will do it only with the permission of Allah. And that is what Allah is asking as a rhetoric question in Ayat al-Kursi. Who can dare to intercede on day of judgment without I giving them the permission? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the Ayat al-Kursi. Allah knows everything that is in front of you and behind you. You don't know what is behind you, but Allah knows everything. The other meaning of this part is, He knows what is obvious and He knows what is hidden in your hearts. He knows your intentions. He knows the intentions better than you yourself can understand your intention. He knows what is hidden and what is open. What is in front and what is behind you. And all the knowledge that you have today, 
you cannot acquire anything by the knowledge except that he wants to give you that knowledge wala yuhi tu na bishayin min ilmihi illa bima sha so if today you are proud that you are a scientist a nuclear scientist a genetical scientist or any other thing you are in the world remember this knowledge came to you only because now allah decided to give it to you wala yuhi tu na bishayin min ilmihi illa bima sha wasi a kursi yuh samawati wal ard and his stool on which he has put his foot it is expanded over the whole universe big 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 universe the science does not know how big the universe is how large the universe is his stool on which he has kept his foot this is what is described in ayatul kursi for kursi ibn abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said it's a stool over the universe this whole universe compared to the stool is just like the ring which you take out from the last finger and throw in the desert how big is the desert compared to the ring the ring is nothing compared to the desert there so this is stool of allah subhanahu wa taala on which only the feet of allah are this is so huge was ya kursi yahu samawati wal ard wala yauduhu hifzuhuma he absolutely does not fatigue he does not become tired to guard this universe wala yauduhu hifzuhuma wa huwa al ali al azim most certainly he is most high ali in arabic means the most high al ali means the most high not ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu nauz billah as some people they say in ayatul kursi ali ul azim means ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu nauz billah you can understand who are those people who give this rubbish explanation nauz billah for ayatul kursi who al ali ul azim he is al ali meaning he is the most high he is at the zenith there is nothing over him the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said of all the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the top of all the creation is the arsh of allah and over arsh is allah and there is nothing over allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ali who al ali ul azim and is the most powerful this is what allah described himself in ayatul kursi the next ayat allah says after declaring this allah declares khat tabayyana rushd min al ghayh allah has made what is true and what is false very clear allah says can you get any other god with these qualities that you worship nobody except allah subhanahu wa taala so allah made truth very clear from falsehood qad tabayyana rushd min al ghay fa may yakfur bit taghut whoever rejects taghut who is taghut taghut is not the name of an idol taghut according to the tafsir of the quran according to the sahaba akram radhiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajmain taghut the sahaba said it means any other thing that you take as your authority even though quran speaks something else about it allah said no interest economy but you took a job in the bank and comfortably you are working in the bank in an interest economy so the bank for you is the taghut allah said hijab you comfortably threw out your hijab to do some job allah said this is your taghut because you have started to worship some other system which is against what i commanded you this is a taghut so what is allah saying now who are the people who believe in allah we muslims believe in allah now allah says i have made truth very clear from falsehood whoever now rejects every other false god why you mean billah and they truly believe in allah subhanahu wa taala they have held a very strong hand they have held to a hand which does not break anywhere in between meaning we are holding to allah subhanahu wa taala and if you hold to allah subhanahu wa taala you have held the most strong hand which will never leave you always there to support you this is the context after this most certainly he is the most hearing the most knowledgeable after this now allah gives a mentioning about allah being the friend of somebody allah says allahu waliyul ladina amanu this allah whom allah define this is me i am the one who does not slumber i am the one who does not sleep i am the one who is the owner of this universe there is no one as powerful as me there is no one above me there is no one superior to me with all this description i do not fatigue i do not eat i do not drink i am the one who is the strongest i am the one who is supporting you every other god besides me every other system except the system i gave you to live with all this is taghut if you reject everything and hold me you have held to the most strong hand and now if you do this 
Allah amanu. Allah will become the friends of such believer, friend of such believers. If Allah becomes your friend, can you imagine what happens after that? Whole universe blocks to him. Allah amanu. Allah will become your friend. Allah amanu. The first thing Allah does when he becomes a friend is Imagine a situation. You are in a dark night or in a dark room. You have no light at all. And you have to come out of that place. You are in a desperate situation because you do not know what is in front of you, what is behind you on the right or the left. You absolutely have no idea. You are afraid that you may fall down into a pit of fire somewhere. You are afraid that you may fall down the building somewhere. Now you need some kind of a light. And suddenly somebody gives you the light. What will be your condition? Allah says, similarly, you are surrounded by the zulumat of shirk and kufr. You are near the pit of fire. I brought you out from there. You are there to fall in hellfire. You are worshipping the taghut. You were all misguided. You were astray. I guided you becoming your friend. I gave you the light to find the way. Allahu waliyu ladheena amanu yukri juhum mina zulumati ila noor. Allah is the friend of the Muslim believers. He brings them out. Yukhrij, ikhraj, khuruj, exit. He brings them out of darkness towards light. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala con continues. Walladheena kafaru, but those who disbelieve in Allah, the disbelievers in Allah, the kafir, walladheena kafaru, what are they? Awliya ahumut taghut. The character of the kafir is, instead of taking Allah as their friend, they take the taghut as the friend. Introspect yourself. In how many situations have you believed in Allah and taken Allah as your friend? Or you left Allah and took people other than Allah? Or took systems other than Allah? Or took orders from other than Allah? Opposing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your success. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is declaring that those people who are my friends, I bring them out of darkness towards light. But the people who reject me, what they do is, they take the taghut as the friend. They take the false deities. They take the false systems as their friend. They think if they follow anything other than Quran, they will become successful. So they take them to be the friends. When they take them to be the friends, what happens? وَالَّذِينَ kafaru أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ التَّاغُوتِ يُخْرِجُنَهُمْ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ Then what does the taghut do? Any other system that comes against the Quran... Allah says through that system you think you will succeed? No. That system brings you. That person brings you. Those people bring you. Those deities, they bring you from light into darkness. From guidance, you go to misguidance because you are opposing the Lord of the universe. See, Allah described himself and then Allah says, if I am your friend, I guide you. If I am not your friend, you took someone other than me as your friend then those friends other than me, they will misguide you from me. They will take you away from me. And if you run away from me, if you move away from me, your destination is hellfire after that. Why Allah himself says in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 257, which I just recited, Allahu waliyu lazina amanu, yukri juhum mina zulumati ila noor, wal lazina kafaru, awliya ahumut taghut, Allah is your friend. He brings you out of darkness into light. But those who reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they take the taghut to be their friend. And what does he do? Yukhrijunahum. He brings them out. Mina nuri ila zulumat. From light, from guidance to misguidance. From light to darkness. And what does Allah say after that? These are the people whose destiny is hellfire. These are the ones who left me and took taghut as their friend. These are the ones for whom I have prepared the hellfire. These are the ones who will go into hellfire. Whom fiha khalidun. And they will remain there forever. Khalidun. Forever and ever. So this is what Allah describes about his friendship. Now to understand this particular aspect of Allah's friendship. Many a times we human beings we are selfish. So the scholars of Islam. They have categorized Muslim community. The Muslim people. Muslim men and Muslim women. To explain 
how we can benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being our friend, they divided the Muslim community into three basic categories. They say the Muslim men and Muslim women, 1.6 billion Muslims on earth today, they can be divided into three categories. You have three categories of Muslims today in the world. One category of the Muslim, they say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows on them a plenty of worldly material. They are given wealth, they are given children, they are given home, they are given Mercedes. They have everything that they can get in this world for which many people desire. So one category is people who get everything and those who do not get anything. But both of them are always complaining about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understood what I say? There is one whom Allah gave a lot. Still when you meet them, you know, I am trying to work hard. I have still to get this. I am thinking of this business. You know, just I had some loss in the business. I really worry. I don't know how to survive. You know, I have fees for the school children. And I don't know how to look after them. You know, we are living in a world today where earning about, I think, 60, 70,000 I earn in a month. It doesn't make a difference. And there is another one who says, you know, I get about, my salary is about 200,000 per month. I work for TCS. 200,000, what does it do? You know, I have to take care of the children. Tomorrow they grow up. They have to take education. I have to pay for them. So always you will find them complaining, complaining, complaining. Never satisfied. Never satisfied. They are always complaining. Along with them there is another one. Whom Allah does not give so much. But what did the Prophet Wasallam say? Always look for the one who is lesser than you in the society who is inferior to you in the society and thank Allah for what Allah gave you over him, what Allah gave you over her. But still this one also keeps complaining. This is one category. The scholars say they are bound to be doomed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the ones Allah has decided not to take them as their friends and Allah has decided to destroy these kind of Muslims. This is a confirmed destruction for them. Why? They are always complaining, never thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any situation. They are never thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a second category of Muslims. See, these three categories, introspect yourself, where we can fit ourselves, where I can fit myself. This is the introspection that is needed now. The second category, they are on the border. As long as good happens to them, alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, thank you so much. Oh Allah, thank you so much. The moment Allah tests them a little bit, finished. You know, I don't understand why Allah always examines me. I don't know why this problem has come to me. You know, I make five times salah. I don't even commit. You know, there are questions asked to scholars. I'm not, I'm not giving an analogy by my own self. If you go on websites where our people ask questions to the scholars, they have these statements. They say, I don't understand, I make five times salah, I don't commit sin, but still why is this examination for me? What did I do? I don't understand. Why is Allah examining me like this? This is the second category of Muslims. As long as they get good, they are happy. As long as some adverse condition comes to them, finished. They forget that Allah did good to them all this time. So this is the second category. So these people, high chances that they can be destroyed by Allah, high chances that they may become thanksgiving people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are on the border always. Their decision Allah knows the best how it will happen. The third category of the people, these are the ones who can really feel the friendship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third category of people. Whatever the circumstances, whatever the circumstances, they are always thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They always keep thanking, they say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. They never complain anything. They never complain anything. Always thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I chose them to make my friends. And if Allah chooses somebody as his friend, what does Allah do to you? The beloved Prophet sallallahu said, ask the Mawla for four things. Our Nabi sallallahu he said in a hadith, Rabb, Allah Rabbul Alameen, he is our Mawla. Ask Mawla for four things. What are those four things? See, we all, being human beings, generally, we look for materialistic desires. If Allah is my friend, if his, this universe is his, why doesn't he give me the American continent as my ownership? That is what I may think. 
But if I am not that smart, I may say, okay, an own house in Jubilee Hill or some other place, a big villa worth 1 crore, 2 crore, 6 crore, 10 crore, 100 million, 1 billion. Why can I not be more richer than Bill Gates? That may be my count. But our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you want Allah to be your friend, ask your friend, Allah the friend, four things. Because this will really help you with his friendship. All other things, it's your destiny already. Allah says in Surah Tawbah, Surah number 9, Ayat number 51. What did Allah say? Khul lai yusi bana illa ma khatab Allahu lana. Say to them, anything of hardship that comes to them, any affliction that comes to them, Allah has already written about it in a book. Meaning to say, in your life, whatever happens to you, whatever you get, whatever you lose, all that already Allah has written with Him. Huwa Maulana. This is an ayat. Huwa Maulana. He is your friend in need. He is your friend to help. He is your truest friend. He is your permanent friend. He will be always there to protect you against your adversaries. This Maulana, he already wrote about what will happen to you in your life. Good and evil, whatever you are going to get is already written. Good time, hard time already written. Hua Maulana. The Momin are those who put their complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is Muhammad Sallallahu teaching us? For your Maula to help you, ask him four things. But we never ask these four things. Because we never understand what actually Maula means for us. Whenever we want Allah to be our Maula, we just think of the worldly desires. Now our, our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, make dua to him and say, Allahumma inni auzu bika min jahadil balai. Oh Allah, I seek your protection. You are my friend. You are my defender. You are my helper. You are my protector. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from the afflictions of adversity. What are the afflictions of adversity? So the scholars of Islam, they explain. Allahumma inni auzu bika min jahadil balai. It means Allah gives you some wealth. You receive that wealth. But Allah increases your needs. That wealth is not sufficient for you. You need more. So to need more, you work more hard. You get tired, but still you can't get that wealth that will suffice you for your needs. Your needs become more, your earning becomes less. This is one of the meaning explained by the scholars. You get too tired working the whole day. By the time night comes, you are like a very tired ox. On the farm. Just go. If you want to say in Urdu, you will say, Thakawa bail. Sara din usne charliya. The whole day it was on the farm. The night fell and it, it is helpless. Look at the people working in high tech today. Look at the people working in the IT industry today. Go to the courts and the courts will tell you highest rate of divorce cases from IT industry. Why? The husband is exhausted by the time he comes back home. The wife is exhausted by the time she comes back home. They don't have time for each other. Both of them are running for money. They are chasing money. But Allah is not giving them. And the Prophet said, make dua. Allahumma inni auzu bika min jahadil balai. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek your protection. That I am made to work so hard, I become exhausted and still my needs are not fulfilled. What a beautiful dua. You want Allah to be your helper? Seek this help from Allah. This is our teaching given to us by our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Another meaning the scholar said of this is, a person has less wealth, more children to look after. Now what does he do? Whole day he has to work now. But still, he can't look after all the children. This is when Allah doesn't become your friend. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is saying. The Prophet says, otherwise if Allah becomes your friend, even small things will suffice for big families. This is how the families were all earlier. One person earned, he would take care of 30 people. Today 30 people are earning, they can't take care of 2 or 3 people at home. This is because Allah left friendship with you. But if Allah becomes your friend, what is the meaning of Mola? One in 
the closest in need to you you need something for your children he gives it to you allahumma inni a'udhu bika min jahdil balai wa darki shaqai subhanallah and oh allah i seek your refuge from severest tribulations what does it mean from severest examination tribulation is examination can anybody guess what can be the severest examination just one guess from anybody what could be the severest examination from allah subhanahu wa taala death uh, it's a result i mean that's the end you are living and what is the examination to you now sorry test of iman i mean these are some words which we may use it but the sense of it is see what is the explanation to this subhanallah allahumma inni a'udhu bika min jahdil balai oh allah protect me from the situations wherein i work the whole day i become tired yet my needs are unfulfilled needs i'm not talking about comfort and luxury i'm talking about necessities of life the whole day i'm working my necessities are unfulfilled still seek protection from that because he is your maula he will help you in the time of need he is your truest friend if he is the friend the owner of the universe is your friend if bill gates is my friend imagine then what happens but the owner of the universe is your friend so the prophet is saying if you want him to help you if you want his friendship ask him to protect you from such situation where you work the whole day and still your needs are unfulfilled second wadar ke shakhai from the severest examinations and the scholars they say the severest examination wallah when i was listening to this when i was reading this even i couldn't imagine that this is the severest examination the severest examination for the muslim is the muslim starts committing sins against allah and allah makes him and her commit the sins easily without he and she realizing that they are going away from allah subhanahu wa taala this is the greatest examination to the muslim they start committing sin and allah makes the way easy for them to commit sin and they think okay that's fine i can do this they want to drink go ahead nobody to stop you commit zina go ahead nobody to stop you want to gamble go ahead nobody to stop you you want to eat riba involve in interest economy go ahead nobody to stop you you want to cheat others and earn go ahead you will become successful you keep doing everything against quran and allah keeps giving you the better and better of this life and you start to think actually allah is very happy with me and imagine a situation that you are a muslim not performing five times salah and it does not even strike you that it makes you a kafir if you do it deliberately wa darke shahai if allah is your friend he will never 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 allow you to fall a trap to devil and the evil he will create ways by which you will not be able to commit sins he will make committing the sin for the muslim hard but if the muslim is easily committing sin this is because allah is not your friend allah has not chosen you as his friend allah has rejected you as his friend so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is explaining us that seek allah's friendship through this this is something that is really going to matter because whatever comes to you in this life already written with allah why are you asking always about this life there is some life for the muslim the real life of the muslim begins after the death so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying if the muslim is left to commit sins wa darki shaqai the severest examination for them allahumma inni a'udhu bika min jahdil balai oh allah protect me from the situation where i work whole day hard but i can't earn by which i can fulfill my necessities of life wa darki shaqai and oh allah subhanahu wa taala protect me from the severest tribulations from the severest examinations wa darqi shaqai wa suil khazai and from the severest trials what are the severest trials the scholars say the severest trial of a muslim is that the enemies of islam and muslim they make it impossible for that person to practice islam protect allah protects you 
Seek protection from Allah that, oh Allah, do not put me in that situation where I can't practice. You are in a free time. You are in a free zone. You are in a wonderful country like India where you can practice your religion. Nobody is stopping you. Seek Allah's protection. If He is your friend, He will make you to live in an environment where you can practice Islam. But if He leaves your friendship, you will be facing trials where they will make it impossible for you. To practice your religion. How does it happen? See today in India. Our Muslim sisters. By their own choice. By their own choice. Which they can't do actually. By their own choice. They don't wear the hijab. A time will come like France. Where government will ban hijab. Then they go on the road for the protest. We want to wear hijab. We want to wear hijab. But when Allah gave you the time. You rejected it. How many of you know that in France. Of all the European countries, of France is in Europe, of all the European countries, the largest Muslim population lives in France. France has the largest Muslim population in any other country of Europe. Compared to any country in Europe, France has the largest Muslim population. Before French government put a ban on hijab, they were not wearing it by their choice. The same thing, Allah says, this time that has been given to you where you can practice your religion by your easy convenience, when you don't do it, then that trial comes. Allah brings over you people who will not allow you to follow Islam. This is when Allah leaves your friendship. This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves your friendship. And the worst affected in that trial, who will be the worst affected in the trial, you know? See, there is one where somebody is killing you. Somebody is torturing you not to follow Islam. There is one that time hasn't come to that person. Before that, this hypocrite, this munafiq, he trims his beard. No, 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 I don't know. Police will arrest me for that. What man? Police will arrest you for that? Have you not read cases in the newspaper? The people, they didn't do anything and they were landed in the jail for 14 years, 18 years of their life. Doing nothing, they were in the jail. If Allah wants you and me to get trapped like that, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not a big deal. You think if you leave Islam, you will be protected. This is what Allah says. This is what Allah says. If they take, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاهُمُ التَّغُوتِ When they take anyone besides Allah as their friend, that friend besides Allah will lead them from light to darkness. This is how you are led. The shaitan led you. It brought fear in your heart to the extent that though nothing happened to you, you yourself left Islam. This is the verse of the trials and the Prophet said, seek Allah's protection from this. If you want Allah to be your friend, if you want Allah to make you his friend, if you want Allah to be your maula, if you want Allah to be your maula means, if you want Allah to be your protector, your truest friend, your permanent friend, your helper, your defender, then in that case, make this dua. Allahumma inni auzu bika min jahad al-balai wa tarki shakhai wa su'il khazai wa shamatati ladai. Subhanallah. What does that mean? Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek your protection that if I practice Islam, I don't want others to make a joke of me. Because it affects me psychologically. If somebody makes fun about my beard, about my dressing, it affects me. It brings whispers from the shaitan in my ear. Maybe I shouldn't do this. And then I start leaving Islam. You want Allah to be your helper? Make this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But hardly we make this dua. The king of the universe, the king of the universe, he said, Say to my slave that they make tahajjud and make dua to me. In tahajjud they make dua to me. Whatever they ask of me, I shall best to them. I will bless them with. But at the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling his slaves, his slaves are committing sins. They are watching Hindi serials, they are watching movies in the night. In the night they are in the parties, in the music and dance clubs. They are wasting their time outside on the roads, in the hotels, doing everything when the king of the universe is saying, is there anybody who wants to ask me something and I am ready to give them. Your best friend, the true friend want to bestow you but you are turned away from him so you actually haven't taken the benefit 
of Allah al Mawla. He is your Mawla, the truest friend. And look at what we are doing. We turn away from him. The Prophet ﷺ said, when he calls, that's the best time to ask him for. Ask whatever you want. And Allah is ready to give you. That's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't ask. Then, if you observe in the society, you will find a lot of people amongst the Muslims who, because of hypocrisy in their heart, because of nifaq in their heart, because of having less taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they turn away from the teachings of Islam. They forget Islam. They don't want to talk about Islam because they think if they talk much about Islam, they will not succeed in the world. You know, I came across a situation in the US recently. I was on a tour between November to January 2017. And there, at one place, there was an Islamic gathering and there was a sister. There was a sister who was sitting on a wheelchair. You understand when you sit on a wheelchair, when your legs are not in a position to work. And she was addressing this Muslim gathering. She was a... She, of course, as a Muslim sister, she was addressing the Muslim gathering. And she said, let me tell you about myself. And she started. She said, when protests used to happen in USA, she is young. She was a young girl, not yet married. When protests happened against the Muslims in the USA, I was in the first line against Muslims and Islam. I was always there in the first line to protest against Islam. Always there. But one day, somehow, I heard a story of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I always thought that Islam is a religion that degrades the women. It has no position for the women, no dignity for the women in Islam, no status for the women in Islam. I was a pro-feminist. But one day I heard a story. What was the story? The story was of Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha. Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha, she migrated. Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha, not the daughter of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, but one of his wife was also Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha. She migrated from Abyssinia to Medina. When she came to Medina, she was a little late. She didn't come with Muhammad Sallam, she came a little later. When she arrived in Medina, she comes across the wife of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anha. And she was discussing about how she was in Abyssinia and all these things. And Umar ibn Khattab ta'ala anhu was hearing whatever she was saying. And then Umar ta'ala anhu says, Anyway, your grade is not equal to us because we are the ones who migrated with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Asma ta'ala anha, she felt like, how can this be possible? Even I was in Abyssinia, already migrated. Okay, I must have reached a little late. But my love for Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu is as much as you love Umar ibn Khattab. And of course tomorrow I am going to meet Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and going to tell him about what you have said. And I swear by Allah, I will not add a word to it, not delete a word from it. This is from Sayyid Bukhari. And she meets Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She says, Ya Rasulullah, I went to Abyssinia. When there was trouble in Makkah, you were the one who asked us to leave for Abyssinia. I left for Abyssinia. From Abyssinia when I came here, Ya Rasulullah, by then you had already migrated, Ya Rasulullah. When I learned you had already migrated, now I migrated from Abyssinia and I came here, Ya Rasulullah. And I met Umar ibn Khattab yesterday and he says, my grade is not equal to those who migrated with you, Ya Rasulullah. Is this true? Her question was, because I did not migrate with you, Ya Rasulullah, Umar ibn Khattab is saying, I am not equal in status like Umar ibn Khattab and those sahaba who migrated with you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he heard the story of this woman or sahabiyah. And he says, Oh Asma, go to Umar and say that Umar got one ajar of hijrat and you got two ajar of hijrah. Umar only migrated from Makkah to Medina, but you migrated twice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get double ajar than Umar ibn Khattab. And this girl, she says, when I heard this, this was the respect that Rasulullah gave to the women. For the first time, it came in my heart that I shall study Islam. And she said, I started studying Islam. And what was the conclusion? She said, I said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And she said, when I became a Muslim, see, this is what I am saying. Now put yourself and myself to whether we are truly the friends of Allah or not, because when you and I become the friend of Allah, we think we shall get all materialistic benefits and a cakewalk into Jannat. 
and look at this revert. Now she says, the moment I became Muslim and told my parents, they started domestic violence against me. They started beating me black and blue. I had a boyfriend. They called my boyfriend and my boyfriend with my father, he broke my legs. You must be wondering that living in USA, why did I not dial 911? You know what is 911? 911 like 100 in India. For police control room, you have 100. 911 is the police line number in USA. And she says, you must be wondering, why didn't I dial 911 and call the police immediately against my parents? She says, because when I read this book, this book, it taught me to be obedient and humble to the parents. I learned from here that I shall not even say oof to my parents. And this religion taught me to lower my shoulders and stand humbly in front of them. I was keeping my duas with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, give me sabr. Oh Allah, give me the result of this sabr. Oh Allah, give me sabr and the result of this sabr. I am doing this sabr for you, Ya Allah. Yes, of course I came against you and your religion. But the moment I understood the truth, now I am standing for it. Make my iman firm for me. And my Allah listen to my duas. I thank my parents who tortured me and brought me more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she says. And I thank Allah because he is true in his promise when I made this dua continuously to him. After a while, when the parents saw that I am not changing, they started to sit with me and they said, what is it that makes you so strong in your faith? When I started to discuss with them, even they read the Shahada. This is when Allah becomes your wali. This is how Allah becomes your friend and everything changes for you. But for us, we never even imagine of this. We never asked Allah, oh Allah help me. To convey Islam to a non-Muslim. Oh Allah help me to bring one non-Muslim brother or one non-Muslim sister to understand your religion and accept the truth. What are our duas? Oh Allah, you are my friend. Give me money, give me wealth, give me an American visa. This is what we ask. But look at what she was asking. Ya Allah, I'm making supper for you. Change my parents. Let them understand Islam. This is how Allah works. This is what Allah says. She was in the darkness opposing Islam. And Allah gave her the light of Islam to the extent with that light she enlightened her parents. Subhanallah. A sahabi of Muhammad sallallahu He was in severe torture in Makkah. Still Allah has not commanded Muhammad sallallahu to migrate to Medina. He was in Makkah and he was being tortured. One day he decided the best thing I should do now is I should be very smart in taking a decision. Smart not in the sense of the physical appearance. I shall be smart enough in my decision. I will meet the top kafir in Makkah. The top disbeliever. The topmost enemy of Muhammad Islam, and I will tell him that I want your protection. Please protect me. For Arabs at that time, even if their enemy came asking the protection, they took it as, an, as a matter of ego for them. They would say, okay, you came to my protection. I am ready to protect you. You must be my enemy. Oh, nobody is going to touch him now. He is in my protection now. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Abu Talib said, he is my, under my protection. Arkham bin Arkham said, he is under my protection. This is how it happened with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this sahabi, he says, I was unable to take the torture. So I decided I will go to this person and seek his protection. He goes to his door and suddenly he realizes why should I ask him for protection when I know Allah is my Mawla? The Sahabi says, when I know, when I believe that Allah is my Mawla, so why shall I ask this person to protect me? I am not going to ask him. He turns away while he is on the way back from that place. A disbeliever of Makkah comes and he blinds him with one eye. He hits him with a knife in one eye. He is bleeding. And they make a mockery. They say, what happened? Where is your Allah? Where is your Mola? You see what happened to your eye? You think Allah will protect you? He couldn't even protect your one eye. Go and ask the protection at least now and turn away from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says, I swear by Allah. I swear by Allah. I am waiting that the other eye also 
through is broken by somebody because the eye that they broke, actually this is the eye that Allah protected for me. Look at their level of belief. If something happens to you as a loss for the sake of Allah, they said this is actually what is safe for me with Allah. But look at our Iman. We have changed. And Allah also changed. And what did Allah say in Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, Ayat number 58 and 59. In Ayat number 58, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We created Adam alayhi salam. And he was amongst our worshipping believers. Meaning who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of his progeny, we sent Nu alayhi salam. And saved him in the ship. And he was... A believing and worshipping servant. A thanksgiving servant to us. And after them we sent Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, Israel alayhi salam. And Allah counts the names of so many prophets. And Allah says, they were our worshipping slaves. Ayat number 58, Surah Maryam. Ayat number 59. After these generations came those people who changed their life from the life of their predecessors. These people, these Muslims, they were not like the people who were before them. What did these Muslims do? Allah Akbar. Allah says, salata." They were the people who neglected Salah. They, we generally translate it as left Salah. You know, Ibn Abbas and Ibn Masood they say, in Tafsir Ibn Kasir for this ayat, they say, Wherever Allah mentions about Salah being left, the word left does not mean leaving away Salah completely. This is the tafsir by Ibn Abbas and Ibn Masood. There is no way it can be imagined a Muslim is leaving Salah. It is kufr if you leave Salah. Wherever Allah says leaving Salah, it only means delaying Salah. Negligence for Salah. Not leaving. Leaving cannot be imagined by a Muslim in Islam. Allah says when they stopped performing five times Salah regularly, it is then we sent evil to meet them. And what is the evil that meets you? You walk anywhere on earth as a Muslim, you are made to feel ashamed of being a Muslim today. Because Al-Mawla, the protector, he turned away from us. Because you turned away from worshipping him. The Prophet ﷺ said the only thing that differentiates my ummah from all other kuffar is the five times salah. It is unimaginable that you are a Muslim and you don't perform five times salah. Unimaginable in Islam. And if you are leaving salah, yet not realizing how serious sin you are committing, I am again repeating, committing a sin of not performing salah is much more greater than committing zina with your own mother. One salah, one salah if you deliberately lose as a Muslim, you say, okay, asar, I'm not going to make asar today. This sin is greater than committing zina with your own mother. Or committing the sisters, committing zina with their own father. How can you imagine leaving salah? And Allah says, when they started neglecting salah, my punishment was, I sent evil to meet them. And what is the evil? Anything that a Muslim wants to do today in the world, the world is not ready to accept from you. Even if you want to do something good, they say, you, you as a Muslim, you are a Muslim, we don't want good from you. You are rejected outright. This is a punishment from Allah because we turned away from Allah. I would like to conclude with that ayat from Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, ayat number 286, the last ayat. The last two ayat of Surah Baqarah, 285 and 286, Aman al Rasul. This ayat and the last ayat. This was revealed to Prophet ﷺ in Miraj. Allah gifted Salah and these two ayat in Miraj to Muhammad. ﷺ. Of these two ayat, the last one I would like to recite now, where Allah says, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wusaha. This is a teaching to the Muslim Ummah. Allah said to the Muslim Ummah, remember, Allah does not put on you a burden which you cannot bear. Allah does not put on any man, any woman a burden which cannot, they cannot bear. He created you. He knows our capacity better than we can know our own capacity. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسأها Allah does not put a burden upon a soul except what they can bear. لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت Whatever you put your 
efforts towards the result will be the same if you put your effort to move away from islam the end result will be that you will live a happy life and will be destroyed in akhirat then allah taught us a dua rabbana la tuakhizna in nasina o akhtana o our lord do not hold us for account for sins that we commit without an intention of committing a sin against you unintentionally sometimes it happens oh allah please don't hold us for account forget holding us for account for the sins we did it deliberately allah even by mistake if we have committed a sin please don't give punishment for that sin rabbana la tuakhizna in nasina wa akhtana rabbana wala tahmil alaina isran kama hamaltahu ala alladhina min qablina oh allah subhanahu wa taala do not put me into examination the way you put into examination the people before me the people before me it does not only mean sahaba it even means a person who is put into examination of islam just before one second before you made dua of, to allah subhanahu wa taala if there is a brother in syria who has been put to some examination you made this dua you are actually making a dua oh allah don't put me into examination like you put our muslim brothers and sisters in examination over there rabbana wala tahmil alaina isran kama hamaltahu ala alladhina min qablina oh sisters for you Make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Do, do not put us into examination. Let the people before us in Myanmar, the women were raped and the men were standing there helplessly. Ask Allah to do not put you into that examination like the people before you. This is what happened in Syria. You also make dua. It doesn't happen to you that you are standing there and your mother, your sister, your wife, and your daughter are being raped by them and killed by them. Rabbana. ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا اور لارڈ ڈو ناٹ پٹ اس انٹو ایگزام دی وے یو پٹ دی پیپل بیفور اس ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به اینڈ او اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی ڈو ناٹ پٹ اے برڈن اوور می وچ ائی کین ناٹ لفٹ وچ ائی کین ناٹ بیئر ان مائی لائف واف وننا او اللہ آل دی سنز دیٹ ائی کمیٹڈ ایریز دیم فرام مائی ڈائری آل دی ریکارڈ دیٹ ہیو بین ریٹن اف مائی سنز او اللہ ایریز اٹ اوے فار می واف وننا وغفر لنا او اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی آئی ایم اے ہیومن بینگ اینڈ دیر ار ہائی چانسز آئی ول کمٹ سن اگین ان دی فیوچر ایون فورگیو دیٹ سن فار می وغفر لنا ورحمنا ہیو مرسی اپن می او اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی اینڈ وین یو ہیو مرسی اپن می یور بیسٹ مرسی از فنصرنا علی القوم الکافرین او اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی ہیلپ می اوور دوز ہو ڈس بلیو ان یو ڈونٹ میک دوز ہو ڈس بلیو ان یو ایز مائی authorities don't make them do a naked dance over my head don't make them command me something against your book and make me make me helpless help me oh allah against those who disbelieve in you so that my islam is not devastated wa akhiru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin allah